this. Go and tell them that I don't want to hear I didn't say I couldn't join who said my network took me off who said whatever, whatever, look at my face that I am saying this. I want you people to look at my face as I'm saying this. You are too grown for my network took me off and all those stories. And so we are coming to create a group. This time, it will not be rooms. It will not be groups. I am naming the groups based on what we are coming to do, curriculum development. And so names that are in the curriculum, hey, it will be the uh, iPhone, Abaha. Um, but that iPhone no, should know that he or she is not my student because phones don't talk. So phones cannot be in a group. So the, it will pop up and as usual, we are going to design a curriculum. So we need this group. And so as usual, it will pop up, then you will join. When you join, then the norm, the normal thing we did, I think in third year, second semester, the normal thing that we did, you have to create, do a, a screenshot. And this time, when you have your screenshot, please don't forward it to the platform. Share it. When you are sharing it, you realize that there will be a space provided. Then write the name of the group. Let's say group Taba, group Gang, group Queen, group Tamaklu, group um, Pila, group Tyler. And so you do all these things there for us on the platform. We are in level 400, so all of us are available. It means that we have one to two weeks to get this grouping tested. And so if you don't, please, Vida Boatin, I don't I want don't to want read to this. this. I am begging you in the name of God. Allow me to do my teaching in peace. I am not MTN. So if your MTN is not stable, you can leave the platform and go and sleep. As I am sitting here, I started teaching 7 a.m. And the way my network have been disturbing me today, I haven't told anybody I have network issues. I am managing myself. So manage yourself. Nobody here has control over MTN. It doesn't mean that I shouldn't do what I am doing. It's not because of your emergency call in the Upper West or whatever that we will not create group. It is not because of your whatever issues that we will not teach. Allow us to do our teaching and go in peace. May year four, no, I don't, I don't take a filmsy excuses, these network excuses and all those things. When you are in year four, I don't pardon that. So if I mention that you have unmuted yourself, do you want to tell us something? In year four, I believe that you've done, I've done all the pampering in year three. You have been pampered enough. Year four, you are a senior. Year four, second semester, senior, most senior. So don't come and disturb anybody with over from three issues, you know. And a network took me off. A network jumped me down. A network will be what it is. Yeah. Again, from where? Come and see mine. It has written on stable network. The year came in a red. Tawani and one year said, Laka who said, I'm not on so until so do go be no other own. And I will be able to add him. Sandra, add your surname because this Sandra that is there. Group you no know, may you with you add your surname. Maybe I may say me they may come as a moon and say say me see can a can it yawa simple and short. I will tell you as it is, tell you the truth. And so when you come and you come and do and I beg, I beg, you know. No, no. So we are coming to create the groups. You are many, and it means that I'm going to have 
many students in one group. And which also says that the many students, more than half are not going to work. But we cannot create 50 groups. We don't even have the luxury of time for all the 50 groups to um, design their curriculum and then do presentation. And so when we do 30 groups, how many students will there be in a group? Then where are the mathematicians? Hmm? When we do 30 groupings, how many are we going to have in a group? Where are they? Okay. Please, that is three. About 34. And I saw one year, Jimmy. Woman, your group. Thirty-four in a group with the other doors and other. Thirty-four students in a group. Let's do forty groups and see. Forty. Yeah, but any minute. Hmm. So forty will be twenty-five. Even that one, there are many, too many. People don't do work. People, they don't do work. Let's see the names. How many names do I even have for curriculum? For curriculum. Oh, we have 50 names. But if you take 30, I think the nurses will take the rest. So we do this. Ah, 30 groups a day. 34 in a group. Too many. Mm. Mm. And he said that 40 groups will give us 25 in a group. I'm do assemble. People are not going to work. But you see, this course is such that if you don't work, exams, you will be found wanting. Yes, Agnes, your hand is up. Your hand is up. No, the Nsano had to hold as if anything was had you in. That you would say sorry, no, I won't care. Not in that would be a form four. You don't quite anyway. All right, so let's create the groups. Then afterwards, I can do my teaching. I can do my teaching. I'm just confused. Let's do. So we do terrifying. Let's do 30 for the time being. 30, so. 22, 23 in the group, uh, the people that are here, that's okay. All those that they didn't come, they will not get in the group. They will read the course. Uh, okay, so. We have team. I'm going to team and I said it. And we have group gang. Gang. Group again. Please do the screenshot for me. I'm charging my phone, so I can't do it. And if you don't do the screenshot, it means you don't even have a group. Group ban talk. Group ban talk. Group healer. So we do this. 
two group to stand house stand house and we have the screenshot is very important then we have group taba group taba we have we have group Kamaklu. And we have group. And nothing is showing on the screen. I haven't told you anything yet. Or be press I have to the baby screen. I know no apple on the platform. Or prega. So you have group Stenhouse, you have group Tamaklu. We have group Tamaklu, we have group. I'm now assigning the groups. We have group Queen. But the Mose Moya Chefful. Group Queen, we have group Tyler. T T T T group Tyler Tyler then we have group we have group relevance group relevance then we have group Group relevance in groups. Group relevance, we have group coherence. Then we have group, we have group diversity. We have group diversity, the diversity group. We have the flexibility group. Uh, flexibility group. We have inclusive. We have flexibility. Let's do alignment group. Alignment group. Then we have we have the Ovex group, Ovex group. We have the Covet group, the Covet group. Then we have the Now group. We have the Now group. We have the we have the now. What do you have again? We have the evaluation group. Evaluation group. We have the we have the. Hidden group, hidden group. So we have the hidden group. We have the knowledge group. Group. 
we have the functional group, functional group, group, and so all my groups, and I think so. We have vertical, vertical group. Then we have the integrated group, integrated group. Then we have the prospective group. Then we have the competency group, competency group. I hope one of the refs is taking notes for me. We have the psychomotor group, psychomotor group. Then we have the external group, the external group. Then we have development group, development group. Then we have development group. Then we have cognitive group. So I mean, if you know, I'm bad lecture. I feel no be ura, no be mo no ano ho pressure. Chai no mo mo no ano ho pressure. We have the performance group, performance group, 2024. No grief for anybody. We no grief for you. Then Tanakram will be on stress. Will be on. Pragmatism group. Pragma. See them group. Okay. So we have all the 30 groups. Please take a screenshot for me because honestly, I am. All right, groups have been open, rooms have been open. Yes, yes, I've seen people, yes. Please make sure you do the screenshot. And because you are many, the screenshot will be more than one. Make sure you label them all. Make sure you label them all. Make sure you label them all. The screenshots will be more than one. So make sure that you label them. Team hidden, if it is two, you label them all. Rupila, if it is two, you label them all. Not bad. Not so bad. People are still there doing lamentations. And there is nothing on my screen. Am I your screen? If your network is bad, definitely it will not pop up. If your network is bad, definitely you can't join. And thus, I am not the app. So me, I can't do anything for you. I can't help you. I have taught you research methods. It means that you never attended my lecture. I have taught you research methods. I showed you how to get into a group. There was a time that you even did a manual grouping. And you are there. I can't join. The screen is not showing. All these, uh, the Nigerian people say they are just. 
Now talk, you they talk. You go explain now, you go tired because there is nothing. Sister, no room is popping up on my screen. Am I your screen? Hmm? The lamentations. Some of you, because of network issues, it will delay. The pop-up will delay. So instead of writing, writing things, in a A, in a D, and D, and look at your device uh, until such a time that you know that the rooms have been closed. The time, uh, the time that you are spending to do lamentations in the chat box, you know, your pop-up would have come and gone. You sit there and do lamentations. Mm. So it's 12.23. We have two minutes more. 12.25, we are done. 12.25, we are done. So take your screenshots. And please put them on the platform for me. Thank you. The one rep Pokora herself day here, Kalibu, you day there. You have not found your, your room yet. Sylvia Kings. Ovidia, ye can't, ye na, wa beda, ha, kura, wun, ti, min, koi. E, di, yun, technology challenge, fo. E, ne, e, yi, fo. The people that never got a group when they were in level 300 second semester are the same people that never, are also not getting groups. It means that you never learned anything. Even on your own cry, you won't learn. Even when you heard that Krista is coming to teach you, still you won't learn. Hmm? Okay. I think we are 18 now. Please, sisters, um, someone is using an index number without a name. Please, can some, that person add her name to the index number? Please, it seems we are still 18, so can we 
screenshot and go back and join class or go back to the class. Yes, please. Someone should kindly take it. I've tried taking it, but it's not clear. So please, someone should take it. I'm done taking it. Can we leave? Okay. okay. Yeah.
have a group. Some of you, I know you don't have groups. And so, but I don't want to read that in the chat. I am about to teach. And so we know that you don't have groups. I even saw reps that don't have groups. They are there. Mute yourself, whoever is talking. Mute yourself. Fati Nuhu, stop writing. I don't have the group. I don't want to read that again. Everybody knows that people don't have a group. At the moment, that is not my business. My business for the day is to teach. And so allow me to teach. Veronica, Sawason. Ah, why do you sometimes behave like it? You heard me even talking about it right now that I know people don't have groups. We will figure it out. And you still you are still disturbing us there. All of you put your hands down. Let me teach and go, my Sometimes you behave as if you are kids. I just said that I know people don't have groups. We will find a way of getting them groups. And you still, you've raised your hand for what? You still come and type and chat. And we'll be at the end. Oma, Galibu, a whole rep. You come and write. I joined a group by the name Stenhouse. Immediately I joined, I was a rep that I am saying something and you are doing vice. So if a rep becomes as deviant as this, what will the, uh, the class do? If you don't listen to Tenza, you always find yourself in trouble. All right, then. This afternoon, my mission here is to do this. So let's do it and then we leave here. I have shared a slide. If you can see the slides, just raise your hand and let me know that you can see the slides that I just shared. All right. All right. Then, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. The course is Principles of Curriculum Planning and Development. Principles of Curriculum Planning and Development. Of course, I don't need any introduction i don't need any introduction here i don't have to introduce myself you all know me as krista and i will be taking you through curriculum principles of curriculum planning and development this is a technical course that's one i must tell you and so students normally see this course as technical and strive to understand the dynamics of curriculum design, planning, and then development. What this course does is to basically equip you, the student nurse, the student midwife, with the requisite knowledge and skill needed to practice as a professional tutor. What is happening is this, most of you are already in the field of teaching. Others will also join as soon as they finish their BSc. And so you need something. You have to be exposed to the principles that govern us in designing the curriculum. 
when you come to school and then you are told to that you are going to do a course, you realize that I got you your course outline. The course outline basically is information that has been couched from the syllabus or the curriculum for you. So you realize that you have um, the units, you have the sessions, you have the weeks that you are going to do this, you have the teaching methodology strategy, you have the people that are involved, you have reading recommendations and others. All these things come into play so that you will be able to do what you want to do as a tutor. And so we are going to look at six units. Some of the units have five sessions, others have six sessions. And so the first unit that we are going to deal with today, we are going to look at the concept of curriculum. So we look at the definition of curriculum, some basic concept and criteria of curriculum development, types of types and patterns in curriculum development, the philosophies of education and curriculum, and then the importance of curriculum development. Then we'll look at the unit two, which involves the curriculum process. And this one, we will look at the elements of a curriculum, the phases, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, and some factors that also influence curriculum development. Then we will zoom in into the actual designing of a curriculum. And so this is where every group will now choose a subject matter or something and design a curriculum for their group, ready curriculum to be taught. And so here we look at the various models of curriculum, the levels of curriculum development, the curriculum stakeholders, stakeholders that are involved in curriculum development, then steps in designing a curriculum. And so once you have the steps, it means that designing curriculum becomes easier. And then we'll look at some of the best practices in curriculum development. And then the fourth unit will expose us to the content and foundations for curriculum development. And so here we look at the needs assessment. Is there a need? Anytime you are thinking about curriculum, you ask yourself, is there a need? Anytime you want to start a program, you ask yourself, is there a need? Or are you starting the program for starting state? Or there is a need, there is a ready market. There are people who are ready to go through the program. And then we also look at the health system, the education system. We we'll look at the regulatory system. We we'll look at the societal system. And then we will finally look at the determination of objectives for carry column. Then we look at the unit five. We will look at unit five, and there we will look at macro and micro curriculum, how to develop the macro and then micro curriculum. And so look at the definition for both. Then we look at the criteria for selection of learning opportunities and courses in a school. Then we look at the principles guiding the organization of courses. Then you look at the criteria for selecting clinical learning experiences in a nursing and midwifery education. And then we also look at steps in designing a course outline which brings us to our second group work where we will design a course outline. Then the last unit will expose us to curriculum implementation and evaluation. And here we look at the curriculum implementation, the models of curriculum implementation, barriers to curriculum implementation, 
we'll discuss curriculum evaluation, functions of curriculum evaluation, and how to review the curriculum after how many years should we review a curriculum and what goes into the review? What are the determinants of curriculum review? We will draw the curtain on that. And so the learning outcomes and indicators by the end of the semester, you should be able to demonstrate understanding and knowledge of the concept of curriculum. Here, I expect that you should be able to explain the concept of curriculum and discuss various definitions of curriculum by Taba, by Tamaklo, by Gain, by Quinnen, by Wheeler, by Tala. You should be able to discuss them and critique them as well. Then you should also be able to mention patterns and types in curriculum development. You should be able to describe philosophies of education and curriculum. Then you should also state the importance of curriculum development. Then you should be able to describe the process, curriculum process. And this should be evidenced by your ability to mention elements curriculum process go through explain the various phases in curriculum process, and then identify factors that influence curriculum development. Then you should be able to demonstrate understanding of designing curriculum. Thus, you should be able to discuss the various models of curriculum, outline the levels of curriculum development, state curriculum stakeholders, and design a curriculum. And then you should be able to critically examine context and foundations for curriculum development. And this should be evidenced by your ability to discuss needs assessment with regards to curriculum development, the various systems in curriculum development and also list the determinants of objectives for curriculum. And then you demonstrate knowledge of macro and micro curriculum. Thus, the evidence should be that you should be able to differentiate between micro and macro curriculum development outline the principles guiding organization of courses, and then discuss the criteria for selecting clinical learning experiences in nursing midwifery education. And finally, you should be critically examine curriculum implementation and evaluation. And thus, you should be able to explain curriculum implementation, discuss the models of curriculum implementation, and outline some barriers, discuss curriculum review, and curriculum evaluation and functions of evaluation. You are not teachers. You are not doing B ed midwifery education. You are doing BSc nursing education. BSc midwifery, sorry. All of a sudden, you find yourself where you did education. You did education last semester, only for you to come this semester to meet curriculum development and planning. What are your agitations? What are your expectations? What are your fears? Can you share a thought with me? What are your expectations for this course? Mm -hmm. Let's get interactive. Mm -hmm. Yes, Rebecca. Okay, so, so that, please. Uh, my expectation is because I'm able to learn the education last semester, I should be able to develop the curriculum. Maybe after here, I'll be going to the field of teaching. 
so that I'll be able to do it at the field. Okay, I hope so. But at least education, there was a little bit of course outline and something. I don't know about yours, but when I taught the nurses, we, we, we started from there where we did a little bit of course outline planning to teach. So, Fusenia. Your hand is up. You have been called. Fusena, your hand is up. It seems she doesn't know what is going on. So only one person has expectations. The rest of us, yeah, we came to follow. Follow, follow. Are we following or... You don't want to talk about our expectations. We are keeping our expectations. Yes, Fusena, you raised your hand. You have been called. You didn't say anything. And you still come back to raise your hand. Yes, Gifty. Yes, sister. Please, I am expected to be able to um, develop a curriculum if um, I find myself at the education sector. And I'm hoping to come there too. But if you don't, if find, you don't yourself, find yourself at the clinical sector, you still teach students because they come there for clinical practice. And so whether you are the education sector or not, you should be able to help out with curriculum design. Any other? All right. So if the, we all want to keep our expectations to yourself, if you don't have an expectation, get one. Because when you have the expectation, it will help you. Yes. Rebecca, I've muted people. That is when you are now raising your hand. Mm -hmm. I, should be able to, I should be able to also do it. I'll mute yourself and talk. I, I said I should be able to develop curriculum for people who needed it in the field. Ah, so work. that you take money, consultancy. <laughs> you are a dear. Portia. Hello, sister. Please, my expectation is to get understanding into the curriculum development and then be able to use, use it in the future. Thank you. Okay. All right, curriculum is, is technical, but I believe that if we pay attention and practice more, we should be able to get there. All right, then let's look at something. So the course expectation is that you should be able to design a group curriculum, do a group presentation, and also do classwork. There are certain times that when we come in here, we will just break out into our rooms and design a curriculum. Course after whatever is suspected from us, we will start in the classroom. And so let's do this. It's just food for thought. If you look at my pictorial fruits, you'll realize that it's so colorful. We have the yellows, we have the greens, we have the oranges, we have the reds. They are very colorful in a basket. So looking at this, I want you to ask yourself these questions. What do you think schools should do before admitting students for a program? What do you think schools should do? It will come back, but not now. It's food for thought. Then the question is, did you know the courses you were to offer when you applied to Garden City University College? Were you aware or do you have any knowledge of the courses you were going to have to offer? And how did GCUC selected these courses? These courses that you've come in, Realize that the first semester you did education, you did entrepreneurship. Then the semester that you have come, you are doing curriculum 
And I think you have supply chain management or something that you are going to do. There was sign language and all those things. So the, the question is, how did GCC select these courses for you that you've come to enjoy? And then you ask yourself, who are these people in the school? When we say somebody is a principal, somebody is a vice chancellor, somebody is the president, somebody is the pro-VC, somebody is the dean, somebody is the provost, somebody is the HOD, somebody. So when you hear all these people, who, who are they in the school system? Think about it, think about it, think about it. Now, let's look at the concept of curriculum. The concept curriculum. We are trying to define curriculum. And this curriculum comes from a Latin word, which means root, root, which means race course. That is why you have seen the horse, race course. It is horses that go to races at the race course or running course, running course of the horse in the game of ancient room, running course. Now I want to take it in the area of education. It just may imply a course to be followed. A course to be followed. And so to narrow it, then we will say that they are subjects to be taught in school. They are subjects to be taught in school. When you go to the lower primary, the upper primary, the JHS, the SHS, and they ask you to teach, you see, whenever you go somewhere and you are asked to teach, Sandra Arabwa, please stop painting my thing. This thing that you are painting, that I don't know whether you are screenshotting it or I don't know what you are doing it, but this is my teaching slide. The moment you go and they ask you, you say that you want to teach, they ask you to teach. The first thing you should know is the class you are going to teach because it's very important. If you are going to teach level, let's say if you are going to teach class one people and you go with class three syllabus or curriculum, it will not work. And so you always have to know the people you are teaching, their level, and then you know what you are supposed to teach. So we say that if you want to narrow curriculum definition, then we will say that they are just merely subjects to be taught in school. Now, in a broader sense, curriculum is the total learning experiences, not only in the school, but also in the society. And so sometimes when students are writing or they are designing their questionnaire or their research too, and you see a student who have done education recently writing illiterate, hey, no education, hey, when you realize that we have the formal, we have the non-formal and the informal types of education, they are all education. The formal type which we are doing is formal because we want to get certificates. If you look at the um, involvement of the nursing and midwifery education, realize that this nursing thing started from apprenticeship. And so when at a time that people felt that nursing midwifery should move from the basics to the university level, there was even a fight because people felt that what degree do people need? 
you are nursing people. What do you need degree again? But the time they came to realize that even if we want to nurse these people and nurse them well, even if we want to assist these women to give birth and give birth and not die, we need to also add a little bit of theoretical knowledge to the practical knowledge that we have. That is why the first nursing school was established in the hospital. So that this was the hospital, people can learn the theory as well as the practical component of the course. And so curriculum is a total learning experiences. As we are here, there was nothing in the course that said that you will have to know how to join a group. But we are learning it. Sometimes you meet somebody, you meet your classmates, and the way the person carries him or herself, the mannerisms, you, you learn informally. And so when we talk of curriculum in the broader sense, we are looking at the total learning environment, which is not restricted to only schools. And so some people have made attempts to describe what they think curriculum is. And so we look at few of them. Gain, 1967, defined curriculum as series of content units. He limited curriculum to series of content units. And so when you look at the course outline, that we give you that have series of content units that have things says that week one, you are doing unit one session, so, so, and so, session, so, so, and so. Then you are aligning your curriculum to the definition of game. Says that they are just series of content units. And Bantock said that it is the aggregate of courses of study provided in an educational institution. And so for Bantock, he progressed. Gang made a whole blanket statement and said that curriculum is series of content units. It doesn't matter whether this series of content is taught in the school. It doesn't matter whether this series of content is taught somewhere, but the curriculum involves series of content units. And so you have unit one, you have unit two, you have unit three, you have unit four, you have unit five, you have unit six, that is the standard. And then you have the sessions, session six or five sessions. But Bantok moved a, a further, a little bit further and said that curriculum is the aggregate of courses of study provided in an educational institution. And so he restricted curriculum to former education. From his school of thought, he believed that curriculum works better in a former institution than anywhere else. And so Stenhouse said that, let me make an attempt to define curriculum, but I will say that Curriculum is an attempt to communicate the essential principles and features of educational proposal in such a form that it is often open to critical scrutiny and capable of effective translation into practice. His definition is pregnant. He said it's an attempt. The reason being that sometimes the curriculum is such that people don't even understand the content of the curriculum. And so he said that it's an attempt to communicate the essential principles and features of an educational proposal. And so realize that he also is bringing curriculum home. He is also restricting curriculum to educational settings. And for him, the curriculum should be able to be open to critical scrutiny and then capable of effective translation. And so if I am teaching introduction to community health and I am talking about managing disease 
communicable disease epidemiology, I should be able to break the curriculum down in such a way that practically students that are learning this would be able to translate the theoretical knowledge of the management into practical knowledge. Stenhouse, 1975. Oh, I love this man. I love this man, Taba. So I call him Taba Taba. And Taba said that, hey, look here. Curriculum is a way of preparing young people to participate as productive members of our culture. And so he came to introduce something. He was not looking at the educational setting, but he believes that curriculum should be a way of life. And as the things, that series of content that Gend was talking about, that aggregate of content knowledge that Bantok was talking about, that attempt to communicate issues in the curriculum that Stenhouse was talking about, he believed that the curriculum should be in such a way that it should prepare the young people. Why the young people? The young people are the future. And so if the curriculum prepares the young people to, to participate as productive members of our culture, productive members of our culture, this is another food for thought. Ask yourself, when we say that we are making people productive members of the culture, what are we saying? And so Tamaklo came and said that. You see, the moment you hear Tamaklo, it's like we have come home. A curriculum is composed of a selection of socially valued knowledge. Socially valued knowledge skills and attitudes which an educant is made to acquire through various forms of learning. Any questions at this point? Any questions, any contributions at this point? We've talked about gain, we've talked about Taba, We've talked about Tamaklo. We've talked about Stenhouse. What are your thoughts on this? Yes, Rebecca. Okay, sister. Um, my my question my question concern was that so with all this about the four five definitions, so mm -hmm. any of them will be very perfect if you are able to take any of them, or That's you can take each part of the 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 those who define it and then combine those together or you can take only one as a perfect yeah. or they are correct you like, realize that it even depends on where you are coming from okay it, it even depends on where you are coming from if you are not necessarily looking at the former institution but you are looking at like you are in the community and you want to educate, you want to impart knowledge to young people, then you will go with Taba. You will go with Taba. But then, Tamaklo is also there. He said that they are valued knowledge. Whatever goes into the curriculum is valued knowledge valued and so you don't just get up and say that i'm creating a plan um, a curriculum and then you just develop a curriculum you develop the curriculum with valued knowledge and i can tell you that the nursing the midwifery curriculum in gcc has gone through a lot of phases we started with where epidemiology was a stand alone health promotion was a stand alone and then you've come to the era where health promotion and health health promotion and then epidemiology has been merged with community entry and diagnosis. 
And I still feel that at your level, epidemiology should stand alone. And so depending on wherever you are coming from, you can pick a definition. That is why we are not combining. But somebody looking at where he or she is coming from will be will maybe decide to combine. But for me, if it is one, you choose one and you critique one and you critique it well, why not? So it will bring us to someone called Queen, Queen. And for him, he offered the definition based on components of a concept. And so he believed that before you can come out with something you call curriculum, there are certain questions that you need to ask. Address these questions. Who is to be taught? This is very important. There are many people who think they can teach. And when you tell them that, okay, I've given you the opportunity, go and teach midwifery level 400 curriculum. They will not sit down because you are not education students. So you don't need everything in curriculum. You need some relevant things in the curriculum that will help you. That is why there is a team called Team Relevance. So who is to be taught? You are going to teach level 400 midwifery students, principles, theories, and practices of midwifery education. And then you ask yourself, so I'm teaching level 400 midwifery students. They are not B.Ed. midwifery students. They are B.Sc. midwifery students, Bachelor of Science and not Bachelor of Education. So you know that I'm teaching level 400 midwifery students. What is to be taught? They are, you are teaching them principles, blah, 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 midwifery education. Why is it to be taught? They are at their field. Some of them will go to the teaching environment, all right, but as they go to the teaching environment, they will go and do graduate diploma in education. They cannot take this small education and go and do somebody say go and do gagai. This one is just preliminaries. If you want to teach, they will go and do that thing. So you ask yourself, why is it to be taught? Some of you will end up as even preceptors in the clinical sites. Some of you are not preceptors, but you are in the wards and student nurses, student midwives come in there for practicum. Some people come for internship and all those things. And so you need to know, have a little knowledge, some knowledge about principles, practices of teaching, the teaching strategies, the teaching methodologies, when to teach what and when not to teach what. And so you need to have knowledge on these things to be able to function well. That is why we are asking, when you know the reason why you are going to teach, it will help you to know how you are going to teach it. Some people, they will come and bring things like as if you are an education student, but you are not education student. You need an aspect of the education to enable you function well as a practicing midwife. And so you ask yourself, when is it to be taught? This thing that I'm supposed to teach, when am I supposed to teach it? And so Quinn said that before you can define your curriculum, what curriculum is, try to address all these one, two, three, four, five, six, six questions. When you're able to address them, 
I think you now have the authority, you now have the edge to define curriculum. And so for him, after asking all these things, he will come and say that curriculum refers to planned learning experiences that the educational institution intends to provide for its learners. Intention, intent to provide for its learners. And there are other related definitions such as a course, which is building block of a program consistent of limited time component, which can either be three months in a term or four months in a semester. And program is just set of courses leading to a certain degree. So you are here doing the BSc midwifery program at the end of it all, God willing this year, July thereabouts, you'll be wearing your academic gown and then you'll be wearing makeup. Some of you, you do the makeup as you pass in front of me, I even can't recognize you again. And so you do these things and then you come. Then they will come, oh, it's a sister graduation. When we come there, oh, we will take pictures. You will not even see them. You will not see their shadow. They are busy taking pictures by themselves. Eh? And this batch, when they came last year, as they were taking pictures, I told them, when they come and do messenger, when they come and do project, when we are, we say come and write, meanwhile, as you are coming for this graduation within your academic pomposity gown. We don't even see you. You don't even tell us thank you. Meanwhile, you have been stressing us. You don't say thank you. You don't say anything. But that is it. Because that is it. You came to acquire a degree. You came to acquire a degree. I remember there was somebody, the person said that you have suffered. We will suffer past you. You that is the, at the receiving end, what are you been suffering for? Eh? Small exams that you have to write, you say you are suffering. And I was laughing. I said, you people want to graduate, but you don't want to do the things that will make you graduate, like project work. The way this year my project students are stressing me, only God knows. The way they are stressing me and they are playing truancy, it's up to them. They will come and then they will be wearing high heel and doing this ziggy zaga, ziggy zaga, ziggy zaga, ziggy zaga, ziggy zaga, ziggy zaga. So that is a program for you. Then we talk of competency. We talk of competency, the ability to deliver a specified professional services. Are you competent at what you do? The midwifery, that the labor room, are you competent? If you are at the antenatal um, session, are you competent? Are you knowledgeable? Uh, can you render your professional service competently? There are some people, they are not supposed to be where they are. They are not supposed to be. Ajua every year dark. Ajua every year dark. Ajua every year dark. This is 2024. Guru. I rest my case. And then discipline, which is a field of study and practice, which is often associated with specific profession, the midwifery discipline, the midwifery profession, the midwifery fraternity. 
How many times did I call that? I called it three times. Paso brache. Ajoa. De wa so nye dinisa. And so it brings us to basic concepts and criteria for curriculum development. Before I do that, I just want you to have a look at this. Just have a look. Isn't it nice? Have a look at this. The concept and criteria of curriculum development. It talks about relevance. The criteria talks about relevance. The criteria talks about diversity of ideas. Otherwise, we'd have been doing normal labor, abnormal labor, normal pregnancy, abnormal pregnancy, peperium, neonatal, something, something. But because of diversity, you have curriculum development, you have sign language. I don't know why they remove French for communication from your curriculum. You have intro to community, you have microbiology, so the diversity of ideas. Then we have the flexibility. It is such that it can be reviewed. It is such that there are certain, you can, you can add up certain things. You can add certain things, flexibility. And then there is alignment. Whatever the curriculum is, the curriculum should align. The curriculum should not be detached, but it should be aligned to whatever program we are doing. And there's always continuous improvement. There is always continuous improvement when it comes to the concept and criteria for curriculum. And so curriculum development refers to the process of designing and creating educational programs or courses. And the purpose of curriculum development is to create a structured and effective planning for teaching and learning. Not only planning for teaching and learning, but it will also meet the needs of the learner. And so whichever course or whichever program that you are offering in the university, what, what that you are offering at the basic or the tertiary level, thus should meet the needs of the learner and prepare them for future education, work, and life. So thus that we are doing, those of us that will go and do postgraduate diploma in education, we will see the relevance of this course. When the first batches, when I was teaching them principles and theories of education and then curriculum, some of them thought that it was a joke. But when they went to Winneba to do the postgraduate diploma, oh, they said something. It helped us, sister. And so that is it. So the curriculum, the purpose of developing a curriculum is such that there should be the need to create a structure which will be which will be an enabler and sustainer for teaching and learning, and at the same time also meet the needs of the learner with regards to future education, work, and even life, life itself. So as you are here and you are acquiring universal education, you should also acquire life issues. Hmm? You should be able, you should learn how to adapt to situations. You should learn new things. I have been with nursing, I've been with midwifery, and I've realized that there is one thing you people don't like. You don't like change. You don't. So this is see and here, you know. So I believe that some of you, when you realize that I was the one coming to teach curriculum, you were not happy. You are not happy, not because of anything, but because of new things you are not ready to learn. And this is why we have a creative group. Who be creative? And we have to do a PowerPoint presentation on Zoom. 
Yes, you have to do it because it will also prepare you for life. Much as you think you are acquiring Bachelor of Science degree in midwifery, there are certain things. Yes, let me punch you because you see, somebody punched me. The person just told the person, somebody that uh, they don't know uh, anything about me teaching. Meanwhile, the person was on the platform. The person was on the platform, but the person created the impression that she was not on she doesn't she has no knowledge in summary of whatever was going on mm -hmm. because you don't want to learn new things life 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 and so when you come to school, then there's a normal pregnancy, abnormal pregnancy. Yes, that is what you have been doing. And so, yes, it's easier for you to do. But the new courses that you have gotten the exposure to, take that one also seriously. Because even the principles, practices of education, if you are not going even into the education sector, it helps in your public speaking. The debates that you organize in your communities and staff, these things, the principles, the practices, the strategies will help you. This curriculum will even help you design a better health education, health promotion plan. It will help you to design. And so many of us, we don't want practical things. You want that, uh, so we have taught curriculum how we are going. And so you will not try your hands on curriculum. We have taught it how we are going. Try your hands on it. Try your hands on it. And so some of us, when we are doing these things, we are not worrying you. Some of us, when you leave the four walls of Garden City University College, you will be looking for us to come and share some of these things with you that you would not find us. And so you need to embrace it because the purpose of curriculum development is to meet the learner's needs and also prepare you for future education. If at this time you are doing project work and you want to pay money for somebody to do project for you without you understanding the steps, so you tell yourself that when I'm doing master's too, I'll go and look for somebody to pay and do the work for me. When I'm doing PAD too, I will look for somebody to do. Then you'll be a half-baked scholar. You'll be a half-baked scholar. Go through the process because the process of the curriculum is such that it is shaping you for your future education, for the work that you want to do, and then the life, the life lessons. When you are disciplined in school, it is for the life lessons. When you are giving timelines to submit your work and so you don't submit them and the work is called zero, it is for future. You cannot live your life as an individual without timelines, anything goes. And so you, you wake up in the morning, all of us have 24 hours, and you use all your 24 hours to watch a movie. You use all your 24 hours to gossip. You use all your 24 hours to sleep. Even when you go to work and you are working, you cannot discipline yourself. Yes, Rebecca, your hand is up. Okay, so, uh, sister, thank you. Please, uh, it's came, the question I have is that now the curriculum, as you are saying, um, I want to find out, is it different from different schools? How this, maybe, for example, how that is it had their curriculum is different from how you has also have their curriculum. But you realize that we will have certain things in common because of the professionalism of the courses we are teaching. You get it. 
And so some of the courses, such as supply chain management, um, French for communication, and I think sign language, were all proposed by the nursing and midwifery council. And so you go to Legon, it is there. You go to KNUST, it is there. You go to UHAS Nursing, it is there. You go to UNER Nursing, it is there. Then these are the common things. Then we will have the dynamics, the specifics, the, the, the things that make us Garden City. The thing that makes them KNUST. The things that makes them UG. The things that makes them UHAS. You get it. And so we built, we all built on a common goal with common courses. If you go to any nursing institution, whether it is private or public, we are all doing anatomy and physiology of the reproductive system. Maybe the way somebody will do it, anatomy, one, two, three. Somebody says, I'm doing anatomy one. Somebody says, I'm doing anatomy one and two. But we all have the basis and then we try to add up something that makes us unique. And then we say that the curriculum development is ongoing process. There is no end to curriculum. That's why we have curriculum review. It's a process, it's ongoing. And so it demands that you, the, um, the, the interest of learners and the demands of the workforce and the society are constantly evolving. They are constantly evolving. And so you need to make the development ongoing process. It should be ongoing. You should not say that. It should be ongoing. That is the process. And so we've looked at the criteria. So we've talked about relevance, diversity, flexibility, continuous improvement, and then alliance, alignment. So we have the curriculum. It should be relevant to the needs of the learner. The curriculum should be coherent. It should be well organized and structured with clear goals, then there should be diversity. Different, all of us, we are, we are coming from different backgrounds. We are coming from different socioeconomic backgrounds. Some of the, us are males, others are females. We have different abilities, but the curriculum should have all these diversities inclusive in the curriculum designing and then there should be flexibility so that it can adapt to the changes of the learner and the market as well and then there should be assessment and then continuous improvement and alignment with standards any questions contributions at this point, we have few minutes to call it a day. Any questions? All right, so this morning afternoon, we have been looking at curriculum development. We tried to look at the definition of curriculum and we said that curriculum was derived from the Latin word, which means race course, racing of horses, running of horses. And then we can say that it is running of courses in an institution. And we want to zoom in and say that in a broader sense, this 
curriculum should be opened. And then we looked at the various schools of thought when it comes to the definition of curriculum, the authorities, the gang, who says that curriculum is series of content units. Then Bantok came to say that it is the aggregate of courses taught in an educational institution. Stenhouse elaborated it so further. And Taba came in. Taba came in to say that curriculum is preparing the young people way of life using their culture. And so when you say curriculum, you cannot take culture away from curriculum. And Tamaklo said that it is something that should be taught in school. And Quen came in and said, if curriculum, if you want to define curriculum, you should look at these three such questions and question them, ask questions on them. Who is to be taught? What is to be taught? How is it going to be taught? Where is it going to be taught? And when is it going to be taught? And so as you summarize all these questions, ask yourself these questions, it will enable you to come out with a definition of curriculum that will suit you and whatever you are doing. Then we looked at the concept and criteria of curriculum development. And we established that curriculum development is a process, the purpose is to ensure that whatever goes into the curriculum will be beneficial in the teaching and the learning process and benefit the learner such that it will prepare the learner for future use in terms of education, in terms of work and life in general. But we said that curriculum is a process. It goes through a process, it's ongoing because there is always new things evolving with regards to our work, with regards to the society we find ourselves in and the world we also find ourselves in. And so as we do that, there is the need to make curriculum in a continuous process so that we will be able to change with times. And so you cannot carry your 1975 notes. You can't be carrying 75 notes to come and use it in 2024. Even 2023 notes, there is the need for upgrade because every minute, every second, every hour, every day, every time, new things evolve. And so if you want to be a great teacher, if you want to be an inspirational person, whatever you are using to impart knowledge, you should review it in such a way that it will align with evolvement of the world. And so we looked at the pictorial evidence of criteria in selecting curricul um, curricul criteria for curriculum development. And then we saw the diversity. Curriculum comes with diversity. Whenever you are designing a curriculum, you should design it in such a way that it will inculcate all no matter the race, the, no matter the background, no matter the gender, curriculum should not be discriminatory. Curriculum should be diverse and it should be all inclusive. Curriculum should be relevant, relevant. And so whatever course that you are offering for people to come in to 
acquire the knowledge, there is always the need for the course to be relevant. No wonder these days everybody is uh, um, turning their attention to nursing, to midwifery, and most of the health courses because of its relevance. And we also said that whatever the curriculum is, there should be flexibility. There should be flexibility in such a way that we'll be able to adapt to changes and also adopt and adapt things that need to be done. And on this note, we end this lecture. I wish you the best. Enjoy your weekend as we prepare for next week. Next week when we come, we we'll look at the types and patterns of curriculum development and then the others will follow. If you don't have a group, give your name to your center rep before the close of today. If you had a group but you left before the screenshot, write your name and put that group in bracket and also give it to your center rep. Thank you. See you next week. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. God bless.